Hey y'all, it's Coach Suo with Greater Richmond Fit for Kids here on this Teacher Tutorial Tuesday for part two of our Boom Card Extravaganza. Uh, in part one, we went over some of the features that you can find in Boom Cards. Part two is going to pick up kind of right where that left off. So let's slide over into the video and see what we got going on. Let's drag in a button. This button can act just like a text box. Um, there we go. So this one is correct. So I'm going to mark it as correct. Oops, I'm going to mark it as correct. There's a little green border around the outside. So we have this button. You can position it using the position things, just like we did before. You can center it horizontally. Uh, the Z order may or may not work. You can vertically align the text. If you click on it, it unvertically aligns it, as in it like puts it to the top of the button. If you click it, it'll center it up. All right. Again, you can change background, you can change the border. Notice that this already has a border color, a width, and a radius. That's what gives it the rounded edge. So if we want to take the border out, we can put it at zero. If we want to make it bolder, we just bump it up. Actually, let's make this a wrong box. Make that wrong. So you can also click on a box and delete it. Now, since this is on this correct box is on the template card, it's going to ask if we want to delete it because it's on the template card, which when you do that, it doesn't delete it from the template card. It just deletes it from this one individual slide. So let's duplicate that box and drag it down can center it up, all the other things that we just kind of went over. So when we go into our preview, we have our button, our wrong boxes, Whoops. which when Whoops. we click on those, they should say wrong and correct. So buttons are nice to give you a little, I mean, they're super similar to a um, text box. However, they give you kind of the outline and things like that built in. And if you want to make the, so right now the the background is a solid color. You can make it transparent. So then things behind it will show through. Yeah, those are buttons. So caption with a pick is just what it sounds like. Let's center this guy up. So we're going to put it in a picture. Let's go with a circle. And then the caption, circle. There you go, gives it a border. It's kind of like adding an image and a text box at the same time, but they're linked, so it's easier to kind of navigate and move them around. So if you click on this tag at the top that pops up, it should allow you to resize it. However, the images and the text inside does not resize with it. You can manually resize that, I guess. Huh. As you can tell from my amazement, I don't typically Use uh, buttons. <laughs> well, that's neat. So uh, when you, if you use a button, you can center things up inside the button itself and not, oops, not on the page. So like that. If you want to center up the button, you got to make sure that the whole, or sorry, button, the caption with picture if you want to center that up, you got to make sure you have that selected. And then your same thing with your positioning and stuff, you can use that. If we want to line everything up, it does not look like that. Oh, that's why, because that is locked. You have to unlock certain things in order to line them up. Uh, let's align them horizontally. So aligning them horizontally puts them kind of centers them up in a way. Nice. So that is caption with a picture. Uh, let's look at fraction. Say we want to drop a fraction here. Hey, everybody. The fractions thing is not going as planned. So with that in mind, let's just skip it. See ya. So let's get rid of fractions. Multiple choice. Drag and drop that in. As it sounds, it gives you multiple buttons 
that already have a border and a background and things like that and already has one marked as correct. With this, you can, so you'll notice when I get into it, there are tabs on these individual ones. There's also an outside tab here. So if I click on the individual tab, it will just change this one, which is listed as correct. I'm going to change it to wrong, which means I don't have to change the text to wrong. So there we go. With this, you can change individual backgrounds. You can change individual borders. Pretty much anything you want to manipulate on this, you can. So I just clicked on each of these to change their background. You can do the same thing for their borders. If I want to change the background of the main box that everything is in, you just have to click on that outside tab. So when I mouse over, there's these individual tabs inside, but then there's also this outside tab. If I click on that, it'll highlight the outside one, which will just change the color on the outside. So, um, if you want to select multiple ones, you just shift click and you can change multiple. If you want to make them all correct, same thing. Since they're all selected, they will all be changed. There we go. So let's click on this outside tab. So it highlights the whole container. Let's change things around a little. Let's just make it that light gray again. So down here, where you have your container properties, this is where you can kind of play around with things. If it is fixed, it will automatically put them in the corner. Don't do that. So you can unlock their fixed position, and then you could always have this one here in the middle if you'd like. I don't often use the fixed position. I'm sure it will have ways that it could be useful. I have not found them in the activities that I've created yet. Grid, we'll put them back kind of how they were. And then flow kind of makes them flow in order. If you make it long enough, then they all kind of, it's kind of like fit, uh, it doesn't fit to the thing. If you want that, then you would go with grid. Because when you're in a grid form, if you want it to be long and narrow, it'll make it long and narrow. If you want it to be short and fat, short and fat. If you don't want two and two, then that's where you change your number of columns. If you put one column, then it has to put all of them in one. Even when I expand the size, it just changes the size of the buttons inside that container, which is great. This is probably why I use the grid feature the most, because it auto resizes and things like that. So if you only have a certain amount of space to work with, then if you need them to be in just this spot up here, then they'll resize to fit that. And if you don't like how they look like that, you can put, um, if there's four answer choices and you do four columns, then I'll put them side by side. And then if you don't like how thick they are, you can shrink just the entire box and it shrinks everything. When you have the entire container selected, that's when you can kind of do your vertical and horizontal stuff like that. That is, uh, that was multiple choice. Multiple picks, same idea. However, instead of words, it's pictures. Now you'll notice down here, I almost forgot to mention this, is that you can randomize their order. So let's make that one correct. We'll change it to correct. We'll even change the background color so it really stands out. There we go. So if I go into my preview, so this is the third one. Go into my preview, it's the third one. If I go back into my preview, it is now the first one. If I go into the preview again, it is the first one again. It randomly puts it in the in in order. Randomly puts them in order. Now it's the fourth one. And it will always, the one that you want to be correct will always be correct even though it randomizes where it is. 
So you might think, oh, this should be the correct one because we made the third one the correct one. Whoops! That's not the case. Since it randomizes it, it also keeps the properties of those items, um, just like the color and things like that. Yep. Uh, so that is multiple choice. Let's go ahead and delete that guy. Multiple picks, like I said, same idea, but it allows you to put in pictures. This is part of the reason why I have shape pictures that have certain sizes, is so that they would essentially maintain their um, size when resized, in a way. So we could drop in all these different shapes and then, similar to the multiple choice, when we adjust the shape of the container, you'll notice I have the container selected because the grab points are on the outside of it. So in this, when I adjust the shape of the container, it'll adjust the shape of the pictures, shape and size, or it'll adjust the size of the pictures. So if I want them to be kind of true to their actual size, then I would want them to be something like this. Now, if I shrink it too much, then they start to shrink in size to accommodate the new layout. Yeah. So again, this one you can randomize if you want. You can change the how many are in the grid, how many columns there are. So since I want there to be four columns, can do that. If I want them all to show up into one, it's going to make them super tiny. So this is the multiple picture version of the multiple choice. And if you don't want them to be randomized, you can do that too. So if you want it to be in a specific order, you can do that. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Nora. I'm here to say thanks again for watching. Uh, this concludes the second part of our video. Stay tuned next week for the third part. Of course, thanks for hanging out with me and Coach Suho. Don't forget to like the video. Comment down below with anything else you want to know more about. Um, and stay tuned. Next week, we get into some experimental stuff. All right. Take care. Bye.